What's up guys, before you get into learning graphing linear equations, there are three things that I want all students to be able to know and to be able to do confidently on your own. So in this video, that's exactly what I wanna do is kind of cover those three concepts. So therefore, when it's time for you to begin in graphing linear equations, you have a solid foundation to be successful. So the first thing that I wanna cover with you that I think all students need to understand before they get started in linear equations is be able to solve for y. So if we kind of take a look at an example, like an x plus a two y is equal to a 12. Okay, one of those key things that we need to do is what we do is, is called converting something or an equation from standard form into slope intercept form. And that's gonna all come from solving for our variable y. Now you remember solving linear equations, right? We're just using our inverse operations and we're solving for usually one variable. And a lot of times it gets tricky when we have more than one variable, which we call a literal equation. So students sometimes like kind of forget, like how do we do things when we have all these variables and stuff like that? So one thing I think is pretty helpful is to go ahead and circle the variable you're trying to solve for. Now in this case, again, we're solving for the Y, which looks like a pretty bad Y. I do apologize for that. So, but hopefully maybe it looks a little bit better now. Okay, now again, when we're solving for something, what is it we're doing? We're trying to undo what's happening to the variable. Now, remember from solving linear equations, we're undoing based on what we call our reverse order of operations. So we're gonna wanna undo addition and subtraction first. Now, sometimes students get confused in a problem like this because they see like, oh, it's plus two. So that means we're adding a two, but we're actually not adding a two. So sometimes it is helpful to maybe like rewrite the equation to a two y plus x is equal to a 12. Right there, I want you to be able to see, oh, I'm actually adding an X to the two I. The two is actually multiplying by the two. So you don't need to rearrange it unless you're kind of confused. Then I would say rearrange it, right? Um, but in, in this case, the first thing we wanna do is subtract an X on both sides. Now, when we are go ahead and you know solving for our linear equations, we do wanna make sure that um, we are putting things in slope intercept form. So a lot of times we're gonna wanna write that X in front of the 12. So therefore now I have an equation of two Y is equal to a negative x plus a 12, okay? Now again, we're gonna go through the same process here. I'm going to circle the two, right? And now I wanna say, all right, well, what is happening to my two, what is happening to my y? Sorry, circle the y. What is happening to my y that I need to undo? You say, all right, the two is multiplying by the y, so I need to undo multiplication by dividing. So I'm gonna divide a two on both sides. Now you might say, all right, I got my y, it's all done, right? And make sure the two divides into both of these terms, right? So that's a negative x, you know, plus 12, um, divided by two. And that's good. Like that is correct. You did solve for Y, but I want to go a little bit step further here just to make sure that you can understand how to put things in slope intercept form. And what I mean by that is basically just breaking this up into a X term and your constant. All right. So this two is going to divide into both of those. And some students go to like, all right, that's a negative X then divided by two plus a 12 divided by two, which is going to be a six, which is correct. But just remember guys, there is a one that's in front that can be written as multiplied by this X. So therefore, an even better way that you're gonna to learn to be able to write this in is going to be writing this as a y is equal to a negative one half x plus six. And that is going to be your slope intercept form. And that is what's going to be the form that's gonna be so useful for you when you're getting into uh, graphing linear equations. Now, the next one is the next important piece of information I think that I want students to be able to know is how to plot points, right? So if I said like, let's plow, go ahead and plot the point four negative two on the coordinate grid. Now, sometimes students like really know how to do this, like it makes a lot of sense, but sometimes students still get mixed up. And so I wanna make sure I can kind of explain this so you so you kind of understand it and you can always rely back on it because a lot of times when students do get, um, do get like kind of frustrated or get um, stuck with misunderstanding things, I always like to refer back to them plotting the points. All right, so one thing, let's go and take a look at a number line. When you're first learning like numbers and inequalities, we use number lines a lot. We rely on number lines to help us with our understanding of like, you know, the relationship between numbers. So let's go and take a, let's put a zero. Actually, let's extend this one more, a little bit down, just so I have this in the middle because I like to have things in the middle. Okay, so there's my one, right? And let's say one, two, three. Here's three, let's say that's zero and then go to left, one, two, three. Okay, so this is what we call our X axis, right? So we can say that is going to be the X axis that is going to be our horizontal axis, right? So if I move to the right, that's positive. If I move to the left, that's going to be negative, right? But that's the, these represent these numbers represent the distance from zero, okay? On a horizontal distance from zero. So what if I took this number line and I copied it, okay? And then I pasted it. Then I rotated it 90 degrees. So now I have what we call a vertical number line. 
Well, if it's a vertical number line, I'm not going to call it x. I'm now going to call it a y. Okay. And so now it's going to be my y axis. This is still going to be a positive three. I'm just going to kind of write it, um, you know, orientate it better so you can read it. And this is going to be a negative three. Okay. So the reason why this is important is because when we want to plot coordinate points, we plot coordinate points based on their value for x and y. So the first number represents the x coordinate, which is that's going to be how far left and right we're going to go along on the x axis. And the second point is going to be represented as the y coordinate, how long we're going to go along the y axis. But again, we're not plotting two points, we're plotting one point. So it's going to have an x value and a y value. So when you're going ahead and plot a point here, what you're going to do is say, all right, that's my x and this is going to be my y. So when we want to plot this, we want to go x and y at the same, we want to be able to find the value for, um, so therefore the point is going to satisfy a x and a y value. So for x, let's just go over to four. So we go one, two, three, four, right? So you can say, all right, that has a x value of four, but it also has to have a y value of negative two. So I need to go down to negative two. And you can see this is the coordinate point that has an x value of four and a y value of a negative two. Voila. All right. And the last thing that I think is like really important, and this kind of goes into just like an understanding of linear equations. And that is going to be, does a coordinate point satisfy a linear equation? So it comes down to like, what do you mean by satisfy? So to understand this, what we need to kind of go back through is like, go back to when we were solving linear equations, right? So if I had an equation like 2x minus a 3 equals 7. Right. And if you remember when we were solving problems like this, you know, you use your inverse operations. 2x is equal to a 10 divided by 2 divided by 2. X is equal to a 5. Right. Now, again, when we first learned this, we would say, hey, let's check our answer. All right. And so what you did is you took your 5 and you plugged it in for the x, right? Your variable. So we had 2 times 5, you know, minus 3 is equal to a 7. Then you went ahead and simplified this. So 10 minus 7 is equal to a 7. 10 minus 7 is a, wait a minute, that's 3. Why did I put a 7 there? What am I doing? That's a 3. So 10 minus three is going to equal to a seven. And you can see now seven equals seven, which means that my answer was correct. Like that is now satisfied. So that's maybe when we're satisfying. Now, in this case, we're not trying to solve. We already have an equation to solve for y, right? It's in slope intercept form. What we're trying to do is say, hey, does this point satisfy that? Now, in this example, we only had x, right? And once we solve for x, we plugged an x in. This has an x and a y. But remember the cool thing, guys. Remember this coordinate point, right? It was right up here. Coordinate points are represented by an x and a y axis, or I'm sorry, x and a y coordinate. So if I plug x and y into this equation and it makes the equation true, then this point satisfies the equation. And that's just really, really important for you to understand when points satisfy or don't satisfy equations. So therefore, when we have that visual understanding of it, things are going to make sense. Or at least hopefully they'll make sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in one in for x and a negative one in for y. Now, what I always like to do is I always like to put parentheses when I'm plugging something in. And the reason why I always like to do that is one, it helps me not make mistakes by plugging things in that have negatives, um, which is not always the case, but you know, it is helpful. And the other thing, it just reminds me of that's what I plugged in. Like I plugged in a one in for X and a negative one for Y. So when I put in parentheses, I, that tells me, oh, you plugged that in. Like, okay, that's, that's where that number came from. Hey, have you ever like gone back and looked at your work to be like, where'd that number come from? What did I do here? Right? So it's really helpful when I put parentheses, that's kind of like my, like me telling me that you plugged something in for that value. Um, now let's just go ahead and simplify. So I have a negative one equals two times one, which is two minus three, two minus three is going to be a negative one equals a negative one. And there you go. Now, hopefully you are ready for, um, graphing linear equations. I'll see you in the next video.